Well, welcome everyone to our session uh, of today. Uh, today we have the pleasure to introduce this wonderful uh, group of educators that have been working in Second Life for a long time. Uh, they represent the Evo Village. Evo is part of the TESOL and that's for uh, teachers of English. And the presenters uh, uh, that will be here with us today are Heike Philip, um, Chelwyn Corrigan, Elena Galani, Hazel Workman, um, who's missing? Um, I think that, that those are the ones. And we get, you know, some um, people are going to be here with us to, today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. Now, uh, let me introduce uh, Heike. Heike will be telling us about the Evo Village uh, um, virtual language learning and gaming environment. Uh, this was a course that was offered by the TESOL, um, by, by TESOL or for educators in Second Life. Um, well, so, Heike Philip, uh, also known as Wen Wesi, is also the CEO, CEO of Let's Talk Online, located in Brussels. Um, she's also a technology support provider for language learning and events in real time. She is a co-initiator of your funded Lancelot Virtual Classroom in Avalon, that's Virtual World, and the Camelot Project, that's for Machinima for Language Teachers. And she, she's the founder of the Virtual Roundtable Conference. She also, she's also, um, she, also she's, she has also participated at the Webcom Teachers of Germany, and she co-owns Edunation in Second Life. So let's hear it for uh, Heike, and she's going to tell us about uh, Evo Village. So Heike, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Pionia. And I'm so pleased that today we are sitting at the bond fire of Pionia's place. Usually we're sitting down uh, near the Irish pub and today we have the pleasure of being hosted by Pionia. And Pionia has been running this little home of hers here in on education for some time for the university that she used to work for in Venezuela. She has now recently moved to Argentina, has Married, married last week. Congratulations to Pionia <laughs> for her new life. Was it last week or the week before? I think just recently. We're so proud of having Pionia be part of the member because she's a beautiful. Uh, an enthusiast for language learning. Now let me just briefly check with you in Adobe Connect. Do you hear me okay? A week ago, yeah. We're running here a simulcast in both Adobe Connect and Second Life. Does everybody hear me well in Second Life? Fantastic. And in Adobe Connect, do you also hear me well? Can you type yes in the text chat? 
Yes, good. It's coming on. Okay, sound is very good. Thank you very much. And Pionia, thank you very much for hosting us here. The lovely home. And you're so active in Second Life, especially with regards to role play. And this is because this is why I have asked everybody to turn up in role play, role play clothes. And look at me here on the right hand side. This is Giovanni. So I'm focusing my camera on Giovanni who's got an excellent, excellent set of armor. Look, it's even like poking through his knee <laughs> without any blood spilling over. Here's Inari with a fantastic fantasy costume. Then we have Anne from Ryan, who is our little rock. Fantastic. So let me tell you about Evo Village. Evo Village, <coughs> as Pionia mentioned, is part of the Evo sessions, which every year has been run by TESOL Carl. It's a five week online workshop for language teachers in any kind of technology. Now, we're talking about 14 sessions in total, one of which was Evo Village. The other Reading uh, from virtual classroom technology like Adobe Connect, I ventured into virtual worlds. Here, this is Education Islands. We've been owning, well, co owning these islands, which
from from the zero like if you don't have any experience in second life there's lots of videos being produced in Camelot familiar And uh, uh, quite a few of us said, oh, I've never built, and I've been in second life for years, but I've not really, really built. So we occupied ourselves with learning how to build, script, language learning games. First, and this were the uh, moderators of Evo Village. Fifteen in total, it was fifteen of us, and the vast majority education residents. So everybody volunteered to take over one of the five weeks of EVO sessions. We had 101 enrollees. Somebody is getting a cup of tea for her cough. That's Nancy. Okay. that's. <laughs> um, we had 101 participants in our EVO session and we were 15 moderators. Oh, I think the 15 are included in the 101. It was on the community, that number. So here was like 80 participants. But we saw a good 40 in world, 30, 40, I believe. Got a group now 50 at the moment. And um, we did five ways to develop language learning games. And what do they look like? Okay, here is a picture of sort of a typical language learning game that you could call a board game. Yeah. Does everybody see the slides okay? Am I raising? Are they raising fast enough? Let me know if I'm talking about something that you don't see. So board games and uh, these board games can be that you walk on them and they create certain uh, with scripts they create uh, either a text chat in it you know a text chat entry or a uh, sound they produce and this is what we learned we learned to add sound we learned to add scripts some of them were beautifully self designed by some of us um, we learned how to create dice, story cubes, um, dice that have a script that when you touch the dice, it jumps up in the air, okay? And if you get the parameters wrong in the dice script, then you will never see the dice again. <laughs> That's all what we had to learn. Then we had a fantastic session run by Hazel Dazel, our, 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 our real techie when it comes to importing mesh objects. She told us everything about how to import mesh. Yeah. Then Carol taught us everything about audio files and scripts. We did virtual scavenger hunts. Very beautifully done. It's right here on Education Island. So we're given uh, certain tasks at certain points, teleported to places. It was wonderful. And we did global simulations. Pionia and uh, Cyber, who is uh, Dr. Doris Molero and uh, Edith Pilot from New Zealand. So both of them did a session a whole week on emoting, on simulations, on games that uh, are part of role play.
the second life number two or we're looking forward to Google Cardboard presenting us with a beautiful world welcome back Nancy or beautiful or we're looking forward to um, I mean it's just the time is not uh, you're welcome the time is not ripe as it yet I feel um, although we have already quite a fantastic set of partners um, in place so this is my presentation yeah as I said it, it's brief but it's only like it's wanting to show you that we are very very excited here on education to delve into this new subject games in virtual worlds uh, it's a bit of an um, yeah a, a paradox because we kept saying a virtual world is not a virtual game yeah we second life is not a virtual game because there are many games out there like video games that have nothing to do with what's happening here in second life and yet games say oh Corelia is coming let me teleport her Um, then again games in Second Life um, can have a fantastic meaning and um, the meaning for t communication and this is what we want to explore and as I said building and scripting is one of our goals now I'm going to show you uh, I mean after just sort of pausing for a moment here and uh, asking for questions um, I would like to then show you uh, still our wiki and the world of Kitely, uh, the world that Barbara McQueen has created and we were just absolutely stunned as what she's done there. So um, stop here at this moment and allow for question and answers. If you want to speak just be aware that Adobe Connect doesn't pick up your sound unless I really switch in Adobe Connect the microphones which I'm happy to do if you want to speak a little longer about your experience at Evo Village but if you just want to say a word or two then I wouldn't mind you typing in the text chat
um, addressing lower level students, which I don't usually do because I teach advanced sort of academic subjects. And it was really nice to look at things again from a lower uh, level perspective, using very little language to teach language and doing being performance driven. That's about it. Oh, okay. Well, I um, well, for example, we started with my graduate students. We started by getting them used to Second Life and then showing them how to adapt the materials because very often we found teachers just didn't know how to approach active learning in a virtual world. So we started out by adapting a lot of their materials and then we started integrating sound and Carol taught us all about sound so I made everybody absolutely sick to death of sound in my voice. I filled all a whole sky platform with uh, seven exercises um, that we often did sentence matching, um, identifying shapes, um, just different things where you would step on a, a tile and it would talk to you and give you instructions. And now that we're moving a little bit into role play and adventures and escapes and treasure hunts, uh, we're kind of showing them how to move around and what we would call physical TPR, uh, virtual total physical response. Uh, so it sort of, it feels after a while being in this world, it feels like it's real. You kind of forget you're not sitting around with your friends or you're not sitting around at a table in a classroom. After a year or so, you feel like you're really there and you're really cultivating real relationships. Now, we, is my voice okay? Am I breaking at all? Uh oh, can you hear me? It's fine. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Yes, um, it's great. Uh, okay, okay. Anyway, uh, so now we're in, we're showing teachers not only how how to adapt their materials and all of a sudden start realizing, oh, hey, I'm in a classroom, now I'm in a virtual classroom and we can basically th do the same things, do similar things, even more going back in history, um, teaching addition and going from step to step and telling someone to add or subtract and then now divide and, you know, different scientific um, activities. So we can do this all across education, but I've been doing it with low-level language students and training teachers to do that. Um, and now we're looking at adventure games. So I'm giving them sort of templates to work on and telling them to do this is a model for this kind of activity, such as an adventure game or an escape game. And now I want you to take this model and come up with your own activity. But that's where we are right now. Any questions?
Very good. That was Thank you. Just a little something to get you started. And since Anne taught them to um, storyboard, um, we'll send them home from their training session with the assignment to come up with uh, some kind of adventure Hello, game everyone, or escape game. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Job Simulator. And this so game is set in the future where humans don't have jobs anymore. It's all and done by it robots. Thank you very much indeed, Winchell, for telling us all about it in wonderful video. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wanting to say something? Oh, I wanted to read to you what Giovanni had said because his microphone is busted. So let me read it out loud. Giovanni said, that he's met, so I've met Eva Village this year and I found it very interesting. I had no experience in Second Life and I still need a lot of practice even in basic processes. But this is very helpful community. I think gaming is a very good way to motivate students. And here he types again. Well, I'm just a beginner teaching to middle school students. We work in OpenSim and they're much better than me in working on virtual reality. But they speak much more on this reality than in the classroom situation. Even if some are not at ease with computers and find it stressing. They speak much more on this reality than in the classroom situation. Ah, so they speak more when they're in virtual reality behind an avatar? Is that right, Giovanni? Yes, 
Oh, isn't that amazing? By the way, it's Giovanni is here. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Where do you teach? So, and Giovanni was a participant in Evo Village. Look at him, the great avatar. Yes, um, yes, Giovanni, tell us a little bit where you're teaching, where you're located, and what kind of school, and what subject. Uh, just uh, again zooming out a little bit. By the way, this building here at the bottom is Winchell's. That's Pionia. So Giovanni is teaching in Italy. And Jen Lan, can you also tell us a little bit about you in text chat? And also Lanari, tell us whether you're an uh, Inari, sorry, Inari, whether you're an educator, where you're located, what kind of school or students you have, and perhaps those in Adobe Connect as well, Lillian, Nancy. And perhaps uh, everybody else, also brief, introduce yourself, Helena, Alan, Anne, Winchell, Karelia, yes, Hazel. And whilst you're doing this, I would like to tour everyone briefly to the um, um, Beaver Village website. Now, the tour will be seen by those in Adobe Connect. If you want to join me, you can join Adobe Connect if you like, but you will hear both my voice in Ad Second Life and in Adobe. So it's perhaps better if you um, just focus on one environment. If you know Evo Village Wiki already, if not, I can give you the link to Adobe Connect here in text chat. As I said, if you want to join, feel free. So Jenlan Sarah says, I'm a clinical psychologist in real life and a host of meditation events in Second Life. Beautiful. Karelia teaches an 11 to 18 school in the UK, French, German and Italian. Italian as well now. <laughs> Karelia is amazing. <laughs> Winchell teaches at the University of San Francisco. Si, <laughs> guarda. <laughs> Oh, she's amazing what languages she teaches in school. Uh, sorry, just um, providing you with the Adobe Connector. And SL MOOC 16. Nice to know you teach Italian. Yes, Giovanni, join her. <laughs> A Karelia has done in the past. She's done this fantastic thing that she had uh, students, yeah, and because they're not allowed to go into the second life, what she would do is on the whiteboard, interactive whiteboard, she would enter herself with her own avatar, enter second life, and then go to a French-speaking sim, for example, Arcachon, and then talk to those in Arcachon in real time, and then have the students hear this conversation in the classroom. I mean, fantastic, a wonderful use of Second Life in this environment. You know, talking to friends in French. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So, I'm um, going to do that again with the new Louvre Museum. Wow, 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 cool. Okay, I just have to clear a few chats here, sorry. Okay, now let me briefly uh, tour you through the website because what happened is in January this year 
we said, okay, let's start on this new games in virtual worlds and, and let's try and do this. And in fact, what we've done, we, in five weeks, we've filled a complete wiki full with information on how to create games. So, Evo Village, here's the wiki, it's called evovillage.pbworks.com. Can somebody type that in the text chat in Second Life, if you could? Because right now, those in Adobe Connect will be seeing the wiki as I'm touring them. And here is just an overview of the five weeks, uh, all the moderators, their bios that were part of it. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful group of experienced language educators uh, who shared their know-how. And we, we, in the beginning, we didn't even know really what to share. So, you know, it's just one of those that developed over time. And here in the first week, the, all the board games, I mentioned before, we learned how to create dice. Here on the wiki is the dice script, yeah? And on the recording, you will also hear how to adjust the parameters, for example, yeah? The recordings of each of the sessions are on top of the page. Um, the, there were two live sessions every week. Here in week two, we learned all about adding sounds to objects, creating game boards, um, a lot of language learning activities that sort of address all four skills, which is in our trade called uh, speaking, listening, writing, and reading. And so to address all four skills is often the challenge in, in class. And so we created transparent globes. When you walk through, they create a sound. Then we, this is a magnetic, uh, poetry board. Again, these resources are all on education. Here, Carol has been trying to create a maze. Um, here, we've got this teaching scenario. So lots of images, lots of descriptions, and above all, the recordings of the session. Week three, we learned how to import mesh. I mentioned that Hazel did a fantastic job with the <laughs> Beware of the Rabbit, <laughs> um, the Wear Rabbit. Um, so, uh, also recordings are on here, uh, some made, then instructions, how to import mesh, um, scavenger hunt by Randall, he explained, you know, how the sessions, the results of which, because everybody of us, we had to, in a Google Doc, write down, when we went to a place, for example, he asked, you know, so how many, uh, what not are in this uh, golden treasure on the floor? You know this this. Um, or, or I mean, he asked lots of questions. Uh, every time we teleported to a place, there was a note card, and then we had to answer questions. Oh, by the way, I still need to read to you, Nancy, uh, in Adobe Connect. She teaches history of psych and basic statics in North Central University, but also consults and teaches online for her husband's teaching project called siazaya.org. Moodle and siazaya, if, that, if I pronounce that right, siazaya.org. So back to our wiki, um, again, full of information, full of recordings, week four, that was then here. Creating gaming environment with Winchell, and now like here, complete parks. And it was uh, Barbara, uh, Barbara, who uh, showed us how to actually add the gaming elements to a language learning activity. Um, so it has to do with time. It has to do with competition. Here she embedded a lots of video on the game design and she studied game design and here these images just in front of you look okay now I'm scrolling down is Idiotopia by Barbara McQueen now Barbara spent in Kitely which is an open sim installation which, uh, where she I think rents it for the land very very cheap uh, she has built a complete language learning world 
called Echichopia and Kitely on 16 sims. And we, we were, we're so excited about Echichopia. We said, oh, we as a group of teachers, come on, let's go to Echichopia and let's build a little bit of an, I don't know, European games park or something. And uh, back came the answer, no prims left. <laughs> So she has built, look at these pictures, from sci-fi, uh, spacecraft, medieval castles, house of histories, uh, houses, edutopia, a city, city line, parks, grants, uh, library, theater, theater again, a grocery store,
the mid Oh, teleport me there. Yes, please. If you could log in and teleport me. So it's not the big castle and village, but it's the medieval village, right? It's the medieval village, but I'm still letting it rest a little bit because it shows the sheer volume of what she's done. And I tell you what, every single house, every single bit, bit of item here, she has built herself. Because, yeah, you can buy things in Kitely, of course, yeah. You can also like import mesh and everything, but she's done a lot of work herself, and even here on education, look, um, boats, village, everything for a beautiful, beautiful language learning center. <clears throat> Let me just finish the website tour whilst uh, Anne is going in second in in Kitely. She'll be there and she'll be teleporting me there. I'll end the uh, tour of the website by mentioning the last week, which was Pionia's wonderful week. Again, the global simulation. Pionia is the master of emoting. And uh, emoting is a, a beautiful, beautiful language that addresses or uh, sort of explains in um, in text writing the actions which the avatars cannot do. Yeah, so you type it in a certain format. It's usually uh, forward slash me. It starts you off, and then an action is described. And the action should be so that it kind of produces a response. And I give you an example. Um, one of the actions forward slash me. You type. Um, Maggie, yeah, take Maggie's avatar for example. Maggie looks at windchill and frowns. And then windchill has to either look back or look away or something, something. In text chat, she will respond. Or Maggie says forward slash me, throws an apple at Hazel. Yeah, and Hazel, what does she do? She types in text chat, catches the apple and eats it, for example, or catches the apple and throws it back. So it's like it's a way of describing in text chat what happens without it really happening because the avatars can't throw apples. That's as simple as it. Yeah, and uh, emoting is what it's called. It's got it has rules. It it's used in role play, uh, it produces story, it produces character, it um, it is beautifully communicative. Um, we've seen language learners go into role playing sims and three months later they come back with beautiful, beautiful English. I mean, I, c I couldn't follow it. So it's very, very communicative. And Pionia does that, has been doing that for many years. She was part of role playing sims, some of which sadly have died, yeah, as so often in Second Life. There's something good, good has to be paid for to Linden Lab. And um, yeah, here on the uh, wiki on the last page, this is what they've, they've done. They've, um, oops, am I on the wrong week now? Week five. No, because all, all of these images are really part of the uh, the final productions of our participants. Yeah, sorry, I'm too fast. Here, yeah, this is the part of Pionia, and uh, also Cyber has uh, used this um, for for gamification, interactive scenarios. It's Helena's um, to explain us a little bit. Of course, role playing. Thing role playing in Second Life is something which is, I think, the very very top of language learning. Yeah, it's it's the the
they are, would be able to do. It was a yeah, no copy, no mod. Uh, it was it was fine, yeah. But it was so funny. And um, anyway, so this is how we learn to share games, how we learn to create games, and we will continue to do so throughout the year. We meet once a week now after the Eva session. The um, Room, an area as your character sees your character's short description followed by what you type. Reacting to it creates a scene that can be short or part of a bigger story. Pioneer continues. These links contain websites that will help you create character profiles, storylines and twists. Each website contains random story types that you need to develop and roleplay. Type in the information to generate your own story. Role playing is about all you need to know about role playing while we add, we add uh, something writing. Exercises can be used with juniors. Short story ideas. Exercise can be used with. Sorry. Short story ideas is a website that she's, she writes down. Short story.
he is the queen, the princess. And even these uh, few characters standing there, they're so, so well made. Oh my goodness, that is just incredible. Yeah. I, I, I specifically, I adore the quality of Barbara's um, creations. And you even feel like sitting down and having an elaborate meal. Yes, Anne, I'm coming. Do you want me to teleport somewhere? And Yen says, greetings. Do you want me to go somewhere? <coughs> no, she's right next to me. Yeah, yeah. There she is, sitting down. Okay. And as this this level of detail that she's been displaying in, in the sci-fi station, in the medieval village, in the, the sheer like, like uh, whole towns that she's created, um, is extensive to say the least. Look here, this is a building site for a yacht. Uh, uh, for uh, for uh, a three-liner, sorry. Amazing. So, let me read Pionia's uh, description again with regards to interactive scenarios. Educational processes, Google Doc, teacher task sheets and organizer spreadsheets using holler scenes. I'm not quite sure what this is. Here's a link to our work. Okay, so she's sharing that um, in week five, isn't this amazing? Here, look, just this, the, just this little building of um, uh, create a building a boat, yeah, medieval boat, and these sort of things. Uh, look, a pirate. What is it? Dynamite, gunpowder. Yeah, <laughs> a shop. For gunpowder, <laughs> and hilarious, yeah. As I said, this is we want to to definitely join her. Just teleporting to where Anne wants me to go. We want to join her in populating this world that she's prepared for all of us. Look, even Shafot. <laughs> Not sure whether that, that's the right expression. English. Uh, somebody getting hanged, killed, headed, beheaded. Here's a building site again. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, look at these just, just the crane and everything. All made for, for future role play. For for interactivity and the level of game uh, building, not only with role play, but sort of gaming activities, scavenger hunts, you name it. Napoleon blown apart, she loves it, Nancy says. Yeah, and just trying to zoom out again to the sheer, sheer volume. Let me show you the map. This is Edutopia. Still has to res. And in Kitely, you don't have to pay for the land that much, but you also still you pay a little bit for um, the uh, when you have students. Yeah, and we find that fair enough. So here, this is Kitely. Is as large as this. Um, look at that. Amazing. Let's move on. What is this building here? I wonder. Let's go. Come and move the building anyway. Wow. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, it's the airport. <laughs> Look at that. It's the airport. We toured the site, yeah, but it was just so, so much we couldn't all do within an hour, yeah. Okay, I'm finishing here. Because it's the full hour. Screenshot of deserted island. Okay, what does he want to show? Jens, I'm finishing here to let you know, uh, just as a summary, we've started to explore virtual worlds and we've uh, sorry, we've started to explore games and virtual worlds with Evo Village. It was our very, very first session. <clears throat> and, I mean, I had the idea for it. But, to be honest, I thought, why didn't I have this idea earlier? <laughs> because, first of all, oh, here it is. Ah, oh, yeah, that's it. Um, now, it's just... It's been so many years that teachers around uh, in our community of educators have occupied themselves with in interactive activities, with game play uh, or, or playful activities, language learning activities here in virtual worlds, and we did never really bring it together. And now. We've suddenly seen what uh, Barbara has created here in Second Light, uh, in Kite And Kite because it's cheaper, it's a lot cheaper, but it's, it's also because we can take learners of a certain age, yeah, below a certain age without any fear. And so, yes, this is an absolute treasure to have. Just looking at it. Absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. This is where the village is. This medieval village. Ah, oh, gorgeous. I'll stop here now. Going back to us sitting here. <laughs> okay. Beth wants to join us. Okay, so I'm at the end of my presentation. I really hope that we can all spend the next couple of years on this beautiful, beautiful topic that holds so much potential for language learning with a playful, you know, playful approach. So times are past, maybe, when language learning was boring. <laughs> As I said, it has to also be productive, and it has to be... You're welcome, Beth. <laughs> Beth, I'm, I've, we're already at the end of the presentation, but it's lovely that you join us. It's very gorgeous. Look at you. And you've... Uh, here you are, because we said dress code role play. Here we go. Isn't she adorable? <laughs> you forgot medieval? Well, quickly change. We won't look. Okay. <laughs> Inadi waves to the tiny. So, um, we're at the end of the session. Open for questions, comments. <laughs> Okay, sorry, Anne, Anne corrected me here. They are saying Barbara did not build everything. She's she's also got many things from designers. Okay, yes, fair enough. Yes, absolutely. Good. Pleased to hear. 